Hey everybody, this is Tom. Welcome to the solo game. We are finally ready to play our first scenario of Gloomhaven. It's taken a lot of setup to get to this point, uh, but I think it's been worth it. Um, if you didn't watch the last video, there were a couple of things that are affecting the scenario here. Um, just a really quick recap. Uh, to start off the game, basically our characters, um, Norman, who's this blue guy, and down here he's this model, and then Crystal, uh, her and her, uh, they were in Gloomhaven and they've been approached by a woman who has mentioned that somebody has stolen some important documents from her and asked us to go uh, find those documents. So that night on our way home, um, we noticed some guy stealing some vegetables and we decided to steal some as well and that has strengthened us a little bit um, by placing some cards in our attack modifier decks. And then on our road out to this place, uh, we came across a bunch of rocks in the middle of the road and we had to move them and it kind of wore us out a little bit. Um, so you're going to see that we're starting off, you can't see it over here, but we're starting off with two cards in our discard pile. Um, but yeah, that's going to bring us to this scenario here. So in the last video, um, I introduced you guys to an app I'm going to be using instead of just using the straight scenario book because it will make things a little bit more suspenseful, I think. Um, and it's this Gloomhaven, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but just search for Gloomhaven in an app store and, and you'll see an icon like that. Um, I also kind of promised that I was going to turn this sideways, but this actually doesn't turn sideways. Uh, so we'll just have to stick with it like this. So I'm going to pick scenario one. So the reason why I like this app, as you can see as I'm putting it on the screen, is that it covers up a lot of kind of future spoilers that I would like to avoid. Um, it does that automatically. That's what you're seeing with these red boxes and blue boxes and the gray boxes. Those are covering things that we can see when we're ready. Um, but up here in the top corner, you can see it just tells us uh, that this is the Black Barrow scenario. There's no requirements to get here because um, it's the first one. And our goal is we need to kill all of the enemies. So let me go ahead and zoom in and we'll read the introduction together. It says, The hill is easy enough to find, a short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves you, uh, would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here you find your answer, a rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very lightly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. Uh, so obviously somebody matches the description that the lady told us about. Take care of these unfortunates, he says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door uh, to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Joke's on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. And so that brings us here. We are at the entrance of this place. We have three guards here. Uh, they're currently surrounding this closed door. We have more map stuff over here and stuff will be unveiled as soon as we open the door. There could be other bad guys or treasures or who knows what's waiting for us in the other room. Um, but we've got to get through these guards first probably. And uh, because there are a lot of rules to cover, let's just cover it as we play. Hopefully that will work out well for all of us um, involved. So that's going to bring us to our friend Norman here. Uh, so this is his play area, and if you've never played this game, I just wanted to go over a couple of things quickly. Uh, we have his mat here, and I have added these cubes. These cubes do not come with the game. I'm going to use them to help me track um, actions that I'm going to be picking for the game. Uh, we have his health and his experience points. Right now he has 10 health and 0 experience points. He has come into the scenario with 2 items. He has... Uh, these boots of striding, which tell us that during his movement, we can use this um, by mm, exhausting it like that. Um, and if we do that during a round, it says, uh, during your movement, add plus two move to a single movement um, that we're making. So that's good. He can move a little bit faster by, by turning that. And then um, 
this doesn't happen once per round. We can turn this and use it um, until we take what's called a long rest, and we'll be explaining that more. Um, and then he also has this minor healing potion in case he uh, gets in trouble. And it says, during your turn, perform a heal three self action. Uh, but when he uses that, he's going to lose this card for the rest of the round. So there's that. Here's his hand of cards. These are two cards that we discarded from the rocks um, event that I explained a little bit earlier. And probably in the future, I'll just pick this card. This is, um, oh, what do they call this? This is like a scenario motivation card. I can't remember right now. Um, but essentially, I'll pick this during the scenario in the future. My bad. Okay. Um, basically, he has chosen to be an executioner type motivation uh, for this specific scenario. And if he can kill an undamaged monster with a single attack during the scenario, then he's going to earn a check mark for the upgrading phase um, after the scenario there. And did I say this is his attack modifier deck? If I didn't, there it is right there. And one last thing that I want to mention about him before we um, go take a quick look at Crystal is that um, he has an overall kind of campaign motivation right now, which is that Norman is a zealot of the Blood God. And there's some story that we read back in the very first uh, video of the series. And basically, he's trying to become exhausted 12 times. And if he can do that, then we're going to be able to open a box. So this is something to keep in mind. It would not totally be terrible if he ends up pushing himself to the point of exhaustion during this scenario. This here is Crystal. Same ideas going on. So we've just got her player board, these cubes that I've decided to add to help me track uh, what we're doing. Um, her two cards that she's discarded, uh, her attack modifiers, and in this scenario, she's trying to become a straggler. Um, if we can only take long rests and no short rests during the scenario, then she's going to gain a check mark for um, end of scenario upgrades and things like that. Here's her hand of cards. It's actually smaller than the uh, Brute's hand of cards. Um, she gets eight cards in her deck to bring to a scenario. Um, and we've had to discard two, so she's only got six cards left in her hand. The, the Brute, Norman, had ten cards, and he's discarded two, so he's got eight. He can go a little bit longer. Um, and then she brought with her a Cloak of Invisibility, which tells us that uh, during her turn she can turn invisible. It kind of um, makes it so that people ignore her when it comes time for fighting. And then uh, this power minor power potion, which is going to add to her attack, and we can... Uh, use that once per scenario and same with this one. They can use both of those once per scenario She's starting off with six health and zero experience and her backstory has to do with her um, losing uh, her childhood friend um, Ended up being killed by a bunch of soldiers And so she's trying to complete four scenarios in Gloomhaven and then when she does that we're going to be able to um, Do a deeper investigation. So that's uh, kind of her overall motivation for the full game so this player board here is more than just a pretty face. It's extremely functional and helpful for us. Uh, basically what it's saying is that at the start of the round, we need to choose a path. We need to choose to play two cards or take a long rest, which we will do when we run out of cards, basically. Uh, so we're going to be playing two cards um, at this point. So we're going to look at our hand, and our job is to pick two cards. And there are some important things to look for on the cards that I'm going to use the cubes to help me track. Every card has a top action and a bottom action and an initiative number and then uh, you'll see that the top action the bottom action and the initiative all varies from card to card they're completely different but every single card also has this attack to and move to as kind of generic actions that we can take um, in case we don't want to use the specials but basically we need to look through our hand we're going to pick two cards and we need to have an idea of one of the cards is going to serve to be the top action, one of the cards is going to serve to be the bottom action, and then between those two cards we need to pick one to be our initiative order. The lower the number, the faster that character is going to go. So if I think, for example, if I think that Norman is going to be hit a bunch on a turn, I would probably want to play this card because it's going to allow him to retaliate and gain some experience points. So that's not a bad card, and this card is kind of cool because it uh, looks like we keep it active in front of us for the round, I believe. Yeah, uh, this is for um, a full round of play. Yeah, retaliate this round. That's what that icon there means. So the bottom action of this card would let him heal two. He could heal a character 
2 um, at a range of 1, and then it's going to let him move this element up, kind of activate this element on the element board. So this is the element board. You can see we have six different elements. And for example, if we chose to play that one card that would activate the earth element, uh, we would move this token all the way up there and it's gonna be available for other characters to kind of call on the earth to help enhance their different um, cards. So that's what that would do. And typically when you're playing this game and you're picking your two cards, you can talk, a, you can talk in general terms about the cards that you're going to play. So, for example, we, could, we wouldn't just say retaliate too, but we, Norman could say, hey, I can go hold off some people, um, something like that, or, or I don't know how you would say in general terms, I can heal someone. I can help your health, or something like that. And then you can speak in general terms about your um, initiative. Um, so you could talk, you can't just say, I have an 18 initiative. You could say, hey, I'm going to go pretty fast. In fact, what do I care? I'm playing solo, but you can probably speak specifically about these actions, but you definitely need to talk generally about your initiative number. So you could say, hey, I'm going to go really fast this turn because out of 99 numbers, this is a 10. That's pretty fast. You could say, hey, I could attack pretty fast this turn if you want to move a little slower or something like that. But let's just quickly go over his cards. I'm, I don't want to spend time. We just talked about that one. On the top, this lets you attack and you can disarm an enemy. Um, we'll talk more about that if and when we do that. And then down here, this says for the round, any enemy who targets uh, one of your adjacent allies with an attack this round targets you. So he kind of stands in place. This lets you attack six and gain some experience, but then it's going to be um, lost, and we'll talk more about that soon. But basically, when I'm looking at all of these cards, I'm going to try to avoid losing cards for right now because lost your cards are kind of like your endurance as you're playing. As you lose cards, it's kind of like you're losing energy, you're losing your endurance, stuff like that. And ultimately, if you run out of your cards, there's nothing you can do, you're going to lose the scenario. Um, or this bottom action is going to let us move three and push some target enemies away. Uh, this will let us attack and stun, gain experience to lose the card. Uh, or we can shield, we could have put up a shield and, and um, protect ourselves. Um, and that would last for the round. Or, um, oh, that's a pretty good initiative too there. All right, some other options we can attack and pierce. We could pierce through shielded enemies. Um, and then on the bottom it says we can move and attack and gain some experience. So you're gonna see that the more powerful cards we lose and the weaker cards don't make us lose those cards. Um, so you have to be really judgmental about when you're gonna use which. Um, attack three at a range of three, and then attack two down here. And then this is a special attack. So when you see icons like this, this is going to say, hey, you're going to do three damage and gain one experience. If you're standing on this gray spot, that means you can attack two people adjacent to each other and adjacent to you. It's called a leaping cleave. Um, or if we chose the bottom action, we could move three, jump over things. Um, we're not blocked by stuff in our way. And then also we can activate the wind on the element board. Or with this one, we could attack uh, with a power of two to three adjacent enemies that are surrounding us. Or if we use the bottom action, we can move three and push. So I've kind of been planning this um, off camera. I didn't want to spend tons of time like analyzing everything. Um, but we're going to pick two cards. I'm thinking I want to pick these two cards here. So... Um, I'll put my hand down here, and the reason is, uh, well, let's go to the board and I'm going to show you what my thought is. So my thought here is, why don't we just move up to three? Uh, we could or could not push people. I honestly don't care this time. Most of his moves have to do with pushing because he's just this big old brute that just pushes people around. Um, and we could target all adjacent enemies. Um, so we could just push, we could move up to people and just push them. That's going to be especially helpful if we come across traps that are set to explode when somebody is standing on them. So I'm, think, I'm thinking about moving three, so I could move one, two, three next to these two, and then attacking uh, with a power of three, just kind of swiping at those guys right there. So let's go add these to the board, and I'm just going to put these right up here. And what I'm going to do with these two cubes, I don't, I'm not stuck to this decision when we reveal our cards. I might change my mind and flip the top and the bottom actions that I'm doing. 
but these cubes are just here to remind me what my thought process is as I'm trying to go through these things. I'm planning on doing this top attack and this bottom move, and maybe I'll even put this in order. I'm planning on moving first and then attacking, and again, I could change my plans later on, um, but that's kind of where my mind is. And then I'm going to use this one to set my initiative, how quickly I want to go. Both of these cards are kind of slow, so I'm not ready to set the initiative yet. Let's go take a look at what Crystal's doing, um, and then that will help us decide our initiative. So here's Crystal's hands. Let's go look at these over the map so I can just briefly explain what they do. And we won't spend tons of time, but Crystal's really good at ranged attacks, and she can target multiple people. But again, the more powerful cards are going to be lost if we choose to use them. So we could do this really cool attack where we attack with a power of three at a range of three. We could hit three different people and gain one experience for every enemy that we hit. So, for example, I'm standing right here, which is out of range. One, two, three. It's out of range for these guys. But let's imagine for a second that I moved myself up here. Well, I could target all three of these guys, do three damage to them and gain experience while I'm at it and activate the fire, um, the fire element. I'm honestly extremely tempted by this. To be able to hit three people at once would be amazing, but I am nervous about losing this card. On the bottom action, it's move three. Okay, whatever. The good thing about Crystal is, and I need to not take too much advantage of this, is that she does have this card that's going to let her recover all of her lost cards. So I'm essentially going to be able to use all of my lost cards twice if I play them carefully and at the right time. So it's not the end of the world if I use this card, but I need to be careful. I've got to budget these cards out. So I like this idea where I can probably move myself into position and really do a bunch of damage right off the bat. I just want to be careful because um, who knows, I have no idea what's waiting in the other rooms. Okay, so there's that. This lets you pick up your lost cards, and then you lose this card for good for this scenario. It's gone. We can't use it anymore, which is what that little icon is saying. You can no longer pick up lost cards. Um, and then this is going to let me move four and jump. All right, so this is an attack three at a range of four. Um, and again, that's not saying attack three different people. It's attack with a strength of three, one person, at a range of four. And additionally, you can target all enemies that are in, a, in the path to that enemy target. Again, one point. So, oh, I could hit these guys in a line. If these guys were lined up, let's pretend for a second they were here and she was here. I could just blast all of them like that. Now, that's pretty neat. All right. Um, oh, where was I? There. Or move four. Attack at a range of three. And I could spend one of the elements from the element board to add one to the attack and gain experience. Or down here, I could put a little tracker on it and it says on the next two sources of damage, you just don't take any damage at all. And also you would activate the um, winter element and then you lose the card. Attack two at a range of three. And then we could spend an element if there's one to spend to add to our attack and gain experience. We have a very similar card already. Um, the bottom action is we can heal uh, a character up to one space away, three health, and then attack three at a range of two, spend the fire element to add a wound to the attack, which is also great, uh, but we've got to get the fire element out in order to add the wound. I'm seeing a combo available, or we could just attack two at a range of two. Oh my gosh. <sighs> This might be the dumbest thing ever, but I am extremely tempted by this because if we can attack all three of those guys and engage the fire element, then we could use the fire element to add a wound the next round. It wouldn't be this round. It would be the next round because uh, these are both top actions. So I would have to play this this round and the next round I could play that one. Oh man, that might strategically be so dumb, but... It also sounds really fun to do, and knowing I can pick this up again later, oh, it's so tempting. I would, need, okay, so what would I need to do? I would need to be able to move um, two in order to make that happen. One, two, three, and then that guy would be in range. I get into, oh my gosh, you guys, this might be so dumb, but I kind of want to do this a little bit. <laughs> okay, we're doing it.
this is, you know what, this is all for fun, right? It's for the kids. So now I just need to pick a basic moving thing. Um, I'm not planning on using this for a while, so why don't I use this bottom action just for the two move and this top action to actually shoot that stuff out and get the fire going. Oh, this might be so dumb. I don't know. It's my first, it's my first round, guys. So let's put our hand down. I want to move two. So the way I'm going to remember that is I'm going to put the cube up here over the move action because I don't really want to do that one. And then we're going to, we're just going to do it. Here we go. Do some serious damage for better or worse. Maybe it's overkill. I'm not sure. Um, but then we also need to pick our initiative. I'm nervous about those soldier guys going before us. So I'm going to pick her to have an initiative of 20. And let's have him have an initiative of 54. We'll just get him going as fast as he can. And now that we've picked our cards, uh, our player board is just going to tell us to reveal the monster actions. And then we need to act in initiative order. So let's go reveal uh, the guard's initiative. And I just realized that I totally forgot to grab the um, bad guy's uh, attack modifier deck in all of the setup and all of that stuff. So sorry. Here it is, right here. Um, let me just give it a quick shuffle. You can tell that this is um, the bad guys because it has this M right here. So we're just going to shuffle this. I should have grabbed that in the setup. I've even already uploaded the setup. I just set it to private. Um, so I can't annotate. I'll probably add a subtitle. Yeah, so in all of my videos, the Klingon subtitles are set. So if I make a mistake after uploading, um, that's there. Okay, so let's just put this here and we'll discard it over here. So um, you can see these guards have these little tiny numbers next to them. So that's guard number four. And what I've done is I've put their health on this. Um, I know I mentioned this in the last video, but if you're just watching this video, I do this differently than the rulebook tells us to do it. Usually you add damage onto the guys, um, but it's just really hard, I think, for me to be able to track who's around. And so I've just added their health on here and we'll remove their health as time goes on. Could be a dumb decision, but it just seems like it makes more sense for filming purposes. So um, guard number one is this one. He is currently at six health. So is guard number four. And then our elite guard right here, He's at nine health. Um, in fact, maybe I'm going to grab uh, another yellow cube just to mark which one is the elite one, just to keep it straight in my head. So that guy's our elite one, like that. Um, again, I don't mean to repeat things that I said in the last video, but I know that we have people that don't care about the setup videos. Um, normally, these guards are on these colored standees. But when these are on the standees, they're going to be really hard to actually see from overhead like that. And so we're just using the cubes to mark who is a regular guard and who's an elite guard um, because that's going to change uh, their abilities over here. These are the regular abilities, the elite abilities, like that. Okay, enough talk. So we need to reveal the guard's um, action card. So flip this over. Okay, the guard has an, in an initiative of 50. So Crystal is going to go first, and then the guard, and then Norman, because we're going from least to greatest. And the guards are going to move whatever movement they have, plus zero, so their normal movement, and then they're going to attack their normal attack, plus zero. So let's go ahead and take care of Crystal's turn first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show that I'm doing her turn by moving that cube off so I can track it. And then... I've been putting these in order from left to right how I plan on doing them. We're going to go ahead and move her two spaces just like we planned. So she's going to go one, two. And then that's going to bring us to the fun action that I can't believe I'm doing. I, here's what I think it is. I think Crystal secretly has a crush on Norman. Norman honestly couldn't give two craps about Crystal. He's on a mission and he's worried about his own thing. But she kind of wants to show off here at the very beginning. And so what Crystal's going to do is she's going to attack at a power of three, at a range of three, and she can hit three targets, and she's going to gain one experience for each of the um, enemies that she hits. And then we're going to move the fire up and lose the card. So let's take that over to the map, and we're just, we're going to, we're going to do it. I've committed. Okay. So she's going to just hop over here. She's going to hit all three of these guys. They're all within range. Um at a power of three, but we're also going to modify her attack. And we do that by flipping over this card, and that's going to affect the power of her attack. Oh, 
I draw as bad as I roll. I'm sure of it. This is a bad omen. That was my first card. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. I don't want to complain too much. Uh, but we're going to subtract one from the power of her attack. So she's going to hit those guys with a power of two instead of a power of three. Uh, and so over here, uh, you can see that the bandit guards, the normal uh, ones with the white cubes are fine. But the yellow one has a shield. It's going to block one of those damages. So we're going to do two damage to this guy. Let me just remove this five and add three in its place. So it's down to four health like that. Same thing over here. And then this guy is only going to take one damage. So I'll just remove that. Now we need to go give me some experience for the enemies that I targeted. And I'm going to put this here and I'll explain more in just a second, but that means I got three experience points. Woo! Oh, wrong way. One, two, three. Sweet. And um, any lost cards, so the cards with this symbol, sorry, right there, they need to go on this side of the player board. And then the other card I should have just discarded right here. But I do need to go add uh, the fire element up. So we're going to move the fire from inert to strong. And I, oh, guys, I mean, I'm probably am so dumb, but I just put myself into a pretty bad position because now I brought myself closer and it's these guys' turn and they're coming after me. Um, yeah. Oh, well, here we go. So what the guards are going to do is they're going to move their normal movement and then they're going to attack. So the way that the uh, guards work is that we're going to start with the elite guard. It's going to do whatever it's going to do first. And so right here, it might be a little hard to see, it has, the elite guard has a movement of two. And so he's going to just come right up here next to me. And then he's going to attack his normal attack plus zero. His normal attack is three. Now I'm going to cross my fingers that he gets a minus sign. Otherwise I'm about to take three damage and that's rough. Um, here we go. <laughs> Why couldn't I have swapped those? All right, so that guard just did three damage. Sue, so we're gonna do three damage. One, two, three, like that. <laughs> oh, he did four. Well, this scenario might end a lot faster than I anticipated. <laughs> I just wanted to have fun, guys. And after the elite guard goes, then in numerical order, the other guards are going to follow. So this guy is going to move one step closer, and then he's going to attack, and his attack is a two, and then it's modified. Come on. Shh. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I can't believe this. Well, the good news is that it just reminded me of something that I should have remembered before, and I just didn't. So we took that four damage last turn, which I should not have taken, but it's on camera. I did it. Um, but with this incoming four damage, which, holy cow, can you believe that just happened? Um, okay. With this incoming four damage, what we can do is instead of taking damage, we can choose to lose a card from our hand, or we could choose to lose two cards from our discard pile to totally negate the damage, which I have to do. So which of these cards can I afford to lose knowing I could get it back? Okay, because I'm going to be able to recover all of my lost cards with that one. So I don't want to lose this one. I need to be able to play it. Um, oh, these two are pretty similar, but I need to hold on to this. That was the whole reason I went in all gung-ho. Um, so let's lose this. So I'm going to put that right there. Oh my gosh, this is a joke. Okay, back over there. And now guard number four needs to take its turn. It's going to move towards the closest um, player. And so in this example, I'm the closest one. Either way, it doesn't matter. He's going to move two. Um, and now these are kind of equally close. Uh, he probably would have slid in there if he had to move a three, but he doesn't. Uh, so that's fine. Anyway, so he's moved two, and he has a range of zero, so he's not going to be attacking anybody because he's uh, not close enough. Gosh, this stupid card. Good thing is, I don't know if it's a good thing, this is going to get shuffled back in uh, near the end of the round, at the very end of the round, actually. Okay, 
Let's go, Norman. I need your help, please. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and move that off because it's his turn. And then I'm still planning on sticking with the original plan, I believe. Uh, let's go ahead and move three, and we're going to push um, one guy, and then uh, we can target all adjacent enemies, so we can kind of push them away. Ooh, maybe I don't want to push them away, because uh, I'm going to want them close. Either way, let's go move three, and I need to move into a position that's going to help Crystal out the best. So, I mean, one, two, three, no point in coming around. I'm just going to come right here into that spot. And I'm going to discard this card, but before I do, let me just point out that had the guards moved in a way in which they could have made this formation, it totally would have been fine and legal for me to change what I was doing for my top action and bottom action. Like, if, if the guards had formed that kind of a formation, I could have chosen to move three and jump over them to put myself into a good position to then attack all three of them. Uh, that just wasn't the case. So, we've done this, we discard it, and now let's go ahead and attack three. We're going to gain an experience and let's see how our attack is modified. Jeez Louise. I don't understand how I don't under I'm not even rolling. Like if you have watched any of my videos you know that I don't roll well. And apparently I don't draw cards well either. That was a joke. Oh, okay. Anyway, so now we're going to be attacking two, and I'll give myself an experience while I'm here. One experience point, yay! So this guy's going to take two damage. He's number four, so we'll pull two damage. He's down to two. That's not too bad. Um, and then the elite guy has a shield of one, so he's going to block one of those two damage, so he only takes one damage like that. And now I just want to show you that these boards are exactly the same, so I'm using hers to continue. Uh, so we just barely revealed. Um, and then we've done the initiative, so the leading uh, card is played, which we did. And then you perform the top ability of one card and the bottom of the other. Sure, that's all good. Um, for the monster action, it just tells us that the elite goes first, then the normals in ascending numerical order, which we did. And it tells you who to focus on, so like who you're moving towards. Uh, they'll always focus on whoever's closest to them, and then whoever has the lower initiative uh, after that. And now we're at the end of the round, where we're going to reduce the element strength. So any elements in these columns are going to shift over one. And then, after we do that, uh, we can choose to do a short rest and then lose one random card from your discard pile and recover the rest. So if I wanted to do a short rest, which I don't want to do a short rest because of this um, thing here, uh, then what we could do is I could just turn these over, randomly lose one card, and then get the rest of the discard pile back into my hand. Um, that's a short rest. I'm not doing that with either of my characters, so that's just going to bring us to the very last thing. Any um, Anybody who drew one of these um, icons on their attack modifier, um, either in our decks or the monster attack, we need to go ahead and shuffle those back in. And so I don't have one of those here. Norman doesn't have one either. And the bad news is that the monsters do have one. So both of these good cards are getting shuffled back into this deck. I'm going to separate them. And now we need to do a good shuffle. Okay. And I just realized as I was shuffling, my OCD is a little crazy. Some of these are one way, some are the other way. I don't know how that happened. But I'm going to fix that... Um, now so that there's no um, cheating unintentional or intentional. I would never cheat intentionally and if I was going to I would never do it on camera because you viewers are sometimes picky enough <laughs> on things like that. I'll probably need to do this for the other characters too and I'll take care of that. Okay now those are all facing the same way. Uh, let's do it one more time like that. Okay now that's shuffled that was the end of round one. It is time to go into round two. So coming into round two, I want to start with Crystal, Crystal, sorry, because uh, I was feeling most confident with her, but looking at the board, um, I'm feeling conflicted, and here's why. Let's go, let's go talk about some good options that we've got. So Crystal's in danger, but unfortunately she doesn't have any of her healing cards in her hand right now. We made that whole big move so that we could use this attack. 
um, and add a wound onto somebody, and that's going to kind of gradually tick them down at the beginning of their turns. It's going to harm them, um, which would be awesome. The problem being uh, that I noticed this. <laughs> this card matches that example I did before uh, we started the scenario, which is that if we could move Crystal, like here, look, these guys are making a perfect line right here. So if I could put her out of harm's way, like in this corner, for example, then she's in one, two, three, four. She's within a range of four. So she could target this guy over here, and it says additionally target all enemies on the path to the primary target. So we could call this guy the primary target, and we could just swipe all of those guys right there and add a leaf. The problem is then we lose this card, and I'm doing that too quickly, and I know that I am, but it's so tempting. This card is only going to harm one person. It is going to add a wound, which is cool, but it's only going to harm them. So, uh, you know, we don't lose it, which is good, and we, we set up the fire, so I probably should do that. And there might be another opportunity to do this at some point. Um, but if I am going to do that, I've got to move out of the way. So I'm here. She's in so much danger. I think if I want to wound anybody, I want to wound the elite guy. Um, so in order to keep at a range of two, I would just have to move back. And at that point, depending on initiative order, this guy's going to come up and either attack the brute or going to attack Crystal. Um, they always go for who's closest, and if there's a tie for who's closest, then they're going to target the person with a higher initiative, or, sorry, a lower initiative, a better one. Uh, so this is an, an initiative of 36, and I just want to move back one so I could use any of these cards to do that. Um, yeah, I'm sure this opportunity will present itself again. Probably not as nicely as this. I just have to try to be disciplined and not use... Um, these uh, lost cards so quickly. So let's plan on this attack here and we'll just use one of these other cards to move. Um, probably this one because I'm not planning on playing it right now. All right, yeah. So we're gonna use uh, this one to attack. And I'm gonna use that for the initiative because I need to go faster to get out of the way. I'm nervous that the, the, the guards are gonna, um, that they're gonna attack me quickly. And then I'm just going to use this one for the generic move of two, just so I can pull myself back one. Uh, that's my plan for Crystal. And for Norman, let's uh, take these over to the map and just evaluate our options. we got to kill these guys. So the good news is with the Brute, he can heal, but only at a range of one. Oh, i got to put Crystal back. So I guess, oh, if he goes fast, he could go quickly and heal Crystal two and then do the leaf. That's not a bad idea, actually, for a good bottom action. I'll ignore the retaliate. We could attack two. I would love to attack multiple people if I can. It's just hard to know who's going to get attacked when. Mm. Okay, maybe we want to use... Mm. Maybe we want to use this attack three. Oh, but then we're not hitting other people. This guy, he's terrible. I want to attack as many people as I can, but all of these are just attacking one person. What about the bottom actions? Um, target all enemies. Oh, we could do this. Oh, but it's it's a lost one. I don't want to do that. Any enemy who targets uh, one of your adjacent allies with an attack this round. Well, we're not adjacent. Uh, with an attack this round, attacks you instead. Well... If we go first, we keep that out, and but at that point, Crystal's going to move back. She's got to move away for her own safety. But if we play an initiative low enough, that's good. But this guy's still going to attack her, and I want to move her back. Um, we could push. Not super great. We could shield ourselves. Attack with two. Ugh. Not awesome. But this elite guy is terrible. Okay. So let's plan on using this attack three with the pierce. The pierce is going to basically, it ignores shields up to two. Um, and then let's, let's heal. And I'm going to make that 18 his initiative. So, yeah, I guess that range doesn't really matter because we're going we're gonna to try to go first. 
So that's going to be the initiative. We're going to heal, add the leaf, and then we're going to pierce. We'll just put these down here. I, well, I don't, I'm learning. Here we go. So with our initiatives and cards chosen, we're going to draw for the guard and see what they're doing this turn. Looks like the guard is going to be moving one less than they normally would, but they're going to be attacking one more than they normally would. <sighs> it's disgusting. But they have an, initi an initiative of 70, so hopefully we can do uh, some good damage. So with an initiative of 18, Norman goes first. Uh, it doesn't matter when we do this. We'll just go ahead and heal Crystal, um, and then we'll move up the leaf. So she's going to go from 2 to 4. Woohoo! Slowly but surely. And we charge this up to strong. And now we can attack one person uh, with a strength of three, and we're going to pierce two. So I want to go after the elite guy. And, uh, you know, I'm making this up as I go. I like the idea of these cubes, but we don't actually need these white cubes. Why don't we just let these guys be the regular so that we can see more of the artwork and those ugly cubes aren't in the way? Yeah, there we go. We've got our elite guys. I'm good. Okay, so we're going to be attacking... Uh, this guy here, and we're going to pierce through his shield. Right now we're at a 3, but of course that attack is going to be modified, and guys, this better be good. Woo! Alright, we're hitting him with 4. His shield doesn't work on this one, so hitting him with 4, I'll take off that 5. And add a 1 in his spot. Okay, he's down to 3. That was good. Crystal had an initiative of 36, so she's going next. And I think we're still planning on executing our plan. Uh, let's let's just move back two. And by two, I mean one, because my range is a range of two, so I've got to stay close. So I'm just going to move right there. And then we're going to attack somebody at range two with three power. And we are going to use some of the fire energy to add a wound just in case. So that goes there. And I just realized I haven't been tracking the rounds. I think that only matters in some situations, um, but there is a round tracker here and we are on round two. Uh, in case it matters, I don't know, don't yell at me. And let's modify that attack. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. So we're hitting this guy with a four, minus one, because he does have the one shield. We just killed the elite guy. Oh man, and we would have added a wound. We did all that work to add a wound. That was mostly precautionary, I suppose, um, and we all know that I need the precautionaries. But either way, this guy is off the board, and when you kill somebody, when they come off the board, uh, they drop off a gold in their place uh, that we can pick up and use that to buy new equipment and things like that. Uh, but we'd have to step on it and end our turn on one of those gold pieces in order to pick it up, uh, more or less. There's ways to get around that, but that's the idea. And just to make sure that I'm careful, I know I forgot to do this with the Brute, but we're just plain discarding both of these, and both of these. And now we just have the regular guards left, they're going to move their movement minus one, so instead of moving, what is that, yeah, instead of moving three, they're going to move two. Um, that's fine, he's already close. And now this guy is going to target whoever's closest, we're tied. And in that case, he's going to target the one with the lower initiative, which was Norman. We kind of planned that out that way. And then they're going to do an attack plus one. We've got to go in numerical order. So we're going to start here. Uh, person number one, attacking Norman. His regular attack is two. And then he's doing a plus one. And then whatever our modifier is. I'll get this cube out of the way because I'm nervous to draw this. All right, so right now he's attacking Norman with three. Just normal three. All right, Norman takes three damage. I could discard a card to stop that, but mm, it's Norman. He's not afraid of three damage. And, and remember, he wants to be exhausted by the end of this uh, scenario. We do have two more rooms, but, you know, there you go. And now guard number four is going to go, and he is going to be hitting the same amount. He's hitting Norman with three plus one. All right, four. Ooh, that one might be worth, that one might be worth stopping. I'm all for getting hurt and all of that, but uh, let's just take a look. Are there any of these cards we feel like we could discard without too much stress? Um, let me see. I don't remember exactly what Disarm does. Uh, this game has some great player aids because there are so many icons. Let's just double check here. Disarm. That person cannot attack, remove 
uh, the token at the end of the term. Oh, okay. Well, that's a pretty good one, I guess. It's an attack two. Um, an attack six. Wow, those are great. We could have shield ourselves. Ooh, an attack four and a stun. Hmm, stun means that that person cannot do anything but rest, remove at the end of the next turn. Um, okay, so that's kind of like disarm, only they can't do anything at all. Stun or disarm. Okay, I want to get rid of... Let's get rid of disarm because it's a lower attack than stun. Stun seems more powerful. Well, it is a lost card. Hmm. Seems like we probably do want to... I don't know. I don't know the strategy here. Like, is it better to lose a non losey card? Or is it better to lose a losey card? Because at least this card will come back over and over and over. But this card we're going to use it once, but it's more powerful. <sighs> Any enemy targets one of the allies attacks you instead. Oh, crap. These are tough choices. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and lose this one. So it's coming on this side. And that's going to prevent that attack. Yeah, we're good there. And now to close out the round, we're going to lower the element strength by one. Check our attack modifiers, see if we need to reshuffle things in. We don't hear. We don't hear. And we don't hear, so that's good news. Um, and if we wanted to do a short rest, we could. I'm not short resting now. I think we're okay. Round three. Fight. So I'm going to start with Crystal because um, she only has one card left in her hand. She can't choose two cards to play. And so instead, she's going to be doing the long rest. So she'll just announce, hey, I'm doing my long rest this turn. Um, so let's go pick two cards for Norman. So for Norman, his two cards, it would be awesome if I could attack both of those guys because, you know, who knows, maybe I could take them both out. Uh, but looking at the top actions in the... Oh, there is an attack two here. Attack six and attack six and attack. Th Ooh. Okay. Um, the hmm. the problem is I could use a top action and ignore this effect and do just a two attack, and then I could do this two attack. So that's one way to hit both of them. Wouldn't be a bad idea, honestly. Uh, we could push. Well, well. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, I know it's Norman's card, but. Because Crystal is doing a long rest, her initiative is going to be 99. She's going to be the last one to do anything. And so that also means the soldier, the guards are going to be attacking Norman, which is positive. Um, and so maybe we just should. I don't know. Um, let's try. I'm going to attack two on one card, and then we'll just do the normal attack two on the other card. Let's see if we can take these guys out, and that way we're not losing any of our cards. I mean, I could, here's the thing, I could do this attack three at a range three and get an experience, which would be great, for sure. Uh, but then what am I going to do down here? I would just move or protect myself or, yeah, uh, nothing good. So I do think that's what I'm going to do. I don't know that it matters right now which of these two I choose, because I'm going to have to rest next turn anyway. So let's go ahead and play these cards. And, um, yeah, let's do a quick initiative. We'll get this done, see if we can kill at least one of them. We're going to attack, and then we're going to attack like that. With that in mind and all planned out, the guards are moving minus one. They're attacking plus zero at a range of two. Okay, no big deal. That's nothing too surprising or, or, or just anything worse than normal. Uh, but with an initiative of 35, that means that Norman's going first. And so let's, I guess it really doesn't matter. We're just going to be attacking adjacent to us too for both of these. Um, and then they're both going to get discarded. Let's let our first victim be this guy over here, number four. So for this is our first attack of two. We're hitting number four. And modified that two becomes a three. All right. So that kills off number four. And now with our next attack of two, we're going to be hitting at number one. Modified, that attack of two becomes a three. Yay! That doesn't kill him, but it sure does a good job getting him down there. He just has one life left, our last guy there. 
And for his turn, he's going to move minus one. He, he's not moving anywhere, but he's going to attack Norman because Norman has the, the smaller initiative. And he's going to just do his normal attack, which was uh, two damage modified plus zero. All right, two damage to Norman. Not the biggest deal in the world because I've got this uh, potion that could help out. So he's going down to five. And now Crystal needs to do her long rest. So let's just review what this says. So this says uh, that we're initiative 99. We're going to lose one card and recover the rest. Then we heal two to ourself. And then we're going to refresh any of these um, exhausted items. We don't have any of those. So we don't need to worry about that. So what we need to do is look at our discard pile. We're going to end up permanently, kind of permanently, uh, losing one of these cards. Well, it can't be this one. we got to keep that for sure. Um, hmm... Well, whatever we lose, we're going to be getting back. Um, I'm gonna, let's lose this loot. It's, I'm not overly excited about the loot cards. So we're going to go ahead and lose that. We're going to get the rest back. So that means we've got one, two, three, four, five cards in our hand. Not great. we got a couple over here we could still pick up. But that's kind of her thing is she gets tired pretty easily. Um, but she's going to heal two, so that puts her back up to full health. Thank goodness. And then um, we're just going to go ahead and finish the round. So we're going to reduce the elements. No one's going to short rest, uh, I don't think. And then we're going to go ahead and shuffle if we need to for our attack modifiers. So that leaf is now exhausted. No need to reshuffle. No need to reshuffle. No need to reshuffle. It's all good. Okay. Round four. That guard only has one damage left. Oh, our Brute maybe should have short rested. He's going to take his long rest this turn, it looks like. Um, yeah, so we're going to just do our long rest. Maybe I'll mark it like that just to remember. And then we're going to let uh, Crystal go ahead and finish that off. So Crystal has her cards back. I just got to make sure that we kill him is the thing. Uh, so we've got to be aware of our attack modifiers and what that can and can't do for us. Um, that's going to target adjacent enemies. I'd like to hold on to that, probably. Attack with two at a range of three. Well, I'm right next to the guy, so don't know that I need that. Um, let's see. Well, hmm, okay. So I could attack with three at a range of two. It would be good to not waste too many turns, obviously, probably. Um, so, like, we could just do this normal attack... And especially if I hop over here, I can avoid his attack. Not that I not that I want people ganging up on the brute, but that kind of is his job a little bit. Uh, so we could attack with a three at a range of two. So if I could just move over there, how much would that be? One, two, three. And then by landing on the coin, we could pick it up at the end of our turn. So, um, hmm. Yeah... I can't think of anything really better to do with that stuff. So let's plan on playing that. We're going to move, and then we're going to shoot. So lay those out. We'll do our fastest initiative that we can. Move, shoot. That's our plan. It might change depending on what the guard draws. So it looks like he got a 30. Oh, he just beat us. Crap, he's going to attack. Okay, so you can move plus one. He's going to attack me, because we're both equally close, but I have the higher initiative, because the brute, or Norman, is at 99. But good thing is that his attack is going to be a minus one. Um, all right, well, while we're here, we're just going to go for it. He's attacking me. When I say me, I mean Crystal. They're both me. Whatever. Uh, so right now he's attacking two minus one, which is just a one. Not bad. Awesome. And then he misses. And then this gets shuffled back in. Why couldn't they have missed earlier? And now we're going to have Crystal go. Let's move her four. And then I'm just going to do this now. And then we're going to be attacking three at a range of two. So she'll go one, two, three. Land on this coin. And, and if I remember correctly, when you end your turn on a coin, then you pick it up. So now to carry on the attack, we're going to be attacking three, range two. Oh, I do need to go back over there to draw my attack modifier. Ooh, I better not miss. Uh, okay, good. We're going to hit him with three. That's going to kill him. And put a loot right here. And then she's going to pick up 
this loot here. Now Norman needs to finish taking his nap or his rest, uh, so he's going to lose one card from his discard pile. Now these are trickier. Norman, as far as I know, doesn't have any way to get these lost cards back, so this is I do have to be more careful with what to choose for him. Um, I really liked those. I'm liking what this bottom one says. Ooh. My issue is that I don't know that I care that much about looting. I know that like looting is a big deal when you're playing with multiple characters trying to... Um, upgrade their characters, but I'm happy to share. I really am. So that one might be losable. Uh, retaliate. That could be a good thing too. Oh, and it has that great heal ability. This is just looting and moving. Um, attack through. I like that pierce for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's that double attack. Okay. Mm, you know, yep, we're going to lose that loot. Okay, and then we get all of these back. Heal up two. We don't have anything worth turning. Had I used these boots earlier, then I could turn it back. Um, I think that was at one. Like that. Uh, but I haven't used them yet, so that's fine. And so with the bandits gone, we can go ahead and remove these cards. That's done. And we need to go ahead and shuffle <coughs> this deck back together. Because it had that refresher symbol on it. Now those are ready to go for whatever. Uh, before I get too excited, we got to go ahead and discard these cards here. And for round five, I'm going to keep it really simple. As much as I want these two loot tokens, it's not really worthwhile for me to spend two cards just to end our turn on top of these loot tokens. So my plan is I want to get Norman on top of the door to open it to see what's going on. And then I'm probably, so I want him to have a, a low initiative number. And then I want her to follow kind of close behind him and shoot um, whoever's here uh, nearby. So as I'm planning out my cards, that's kind of, that's what I'm going for. I got to get Norman to the door and I've got to get... Um, him ready maybe to attack. Maybe there's somebody right there. Who knows what's on the other side of that door. Um, and then I want to get Crystal behind him, ready to shoot with some ranged power. So for Norman, just taking a quick look here. Uh, what's going to get him to move quickly? Let's see, he needs to go one, two, three. Three puts him on the door. So that's a move three and a push, a move three and a jump with an elemental aspect. Move three and a push. That's not really a move. Am I wasting anything on the top? No, I'm just looking at the bottoms. Uh, attack, shield, uh, move four, jump, attack. Oh, um, okay. Mm, no, I, this looks like a cool card, but I need to plan for that. I can't just do it willy-nilly. Okay. Um, what if... I gain one experience. Okay, I could retaliate two. If I remember right, retaliate means that whenever somebody attacks me, uh, that the attacker is going to suffer damage. Right. Retaliate only works if somebody is right there, if they're really close. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, let's move. And then I just want to have like a range or something prepared just in case. Do I have any ranged attacks? Oh, I do have a ranged attack that's not bad. Okay, um, let's, oh, I want to save that card. Okay, we're going to move, and then we're going to attack with ranged for Norman, and let's have him be initiative 27. So, we're going to go ahead, initiative 27, and we're going to move and attack. All right, that's Norman's plan. We would like Crystal to say not too far behind him. So, gosh, she's down to three cards again. This sucks. I've got to use this at some point. Uh, okay, so we need her to move. We don't necessarily need to move four unless it's safe for us to move and jump over him into the room, maybe. Uh, don't necessarily need to heal, not for four at least. Okay, so what if we, for her, plan on her moving and jumping in case, again, there might be somebody at the door we could get on the other side of them. 
And uh, we could... Which of these attacks do we want? Uh, target all adjacent enemies. Well, I don't think that we're going to have adjacent. Uh, all right, we'll just, we're going to plan on that one. So initiative, let's see. Oh, I don't want her to go before Norman, though. So we're going to give her initiative 80, move, and then attack. So Norman's going first with the 27. Now, typically I've been moving this off, but I know when we open the door, we're going to be looking at some new monsters, and that's going to possibly rely if they're going to go again, depending on this number. So I'm going to keep that there just to remind myself we're at initiative 27 right now. Um, and so let's have him move three. One, two, three. And that opens the door. Oh, man. This means we get to go to the app and see what pops up on the other side. So as we come back to the app, we're going to go ahead and open up this room. Oh, man, looks kind of scary over there. I'll bring it back over. And what we can see are a couple of things. Uh, closest to the entrance where Norman is standing, looks like there are three guards standing there, kind of. Um, remember that we need to look at the top left side, and though there are two guards with a white side and one guard with a black. The black means that there is no guard there, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, so we're going to be placing two guards on that part of the room. And it looks like there's another door with the number one, which I think means as soon as we open door number one, then we're going to read uh, whatever's hiding down here under number one. And then there are two traps in front of it. We'll talk about traps when we get there. And then up near the top, we see three archers, but um, two of them have a black side for the two players. One, so we don't need to worry about that. And the other one is the elite archer. It has a yellow, so we've got to get an elite archer there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've set up the room. You can see here we have our two regular bandit guards, uh, numbers two and five this time. They just were chosen randomly, and we've got their deck of cards back with actions shuffled. Up here we have an elite bandit archer, number five, and we've got their health on here. There's the archer there. Now we also have our two traps set up and a door, so I'm guessing we're trying to get to this door. And one more thing that I wanted to point out up here at the end of this corridor is a treasure chest looking thing painted on the tile. Um, that's not something that I put there, that was like actually on the tile. It looks like it's being protected by the uh, bandit archer. Um, I wasn't quite sure what would happen if I went and tried to loot that treasure chest, so I just barely spent a little bit of time online. Um, and just to clarify, in case you're playing this scenario or you're confused, uh, my understanding is that this is just here for decoration. This uh, specific treasure chest can't be looted. If there was a treasure chest that could be looted, it would be on a tile that looks like this that we would actually place into the room. So just wanted to clarify that uh, in case you had a question and you were about to play the scenario yourself. So Norman is standing here in the doorway. He's facing a couple of, of, of guards, some traps, and this archer. Um, but he gets to finish his turn. And he did finish his movement, so we're just going to go ahead and discard this card. And now we had planned for him to do an attack at a range 3, and that's going to gain him an experience. Um, so... I'm going to keep this here for a second, you'll see why momentarily. Um, but let's go ahead and do that attack, range 3, gain an experience while we're here. Oh, other way. And it probably seems like a good idea to target either one of these. I don't think it matters, um, honestly, but let's go ahead and target number 2. Uh, I said number 2. So a base attack of 3, a power of 3, and a modifier of plus 0. Well, that's not too bad. So Bandit Archer number two is going to take three damage, so I'm just going to take off that five. We'll put two more in its place, so he has a health of three right now. And now, when you open a new door, what we need to do is finish the player's turn, but then, and I think I'm doing this right, we need to reveal some initiative orders for the other guys. We've got to find out what they're doing this turn. Okay, so this Archer has an initiative of 31, and the guards have an initiative of 55. Norman had an initiative of 27, which is why I put this here to remind myself that he was 27. And Crystal, we set her initiative at 80, so she's not going for a while. And that means that it's the archer's turn. Now, if either of these had an initiative that was lower than Norman's 27, they would go in initiative order first, like they kind of catch up to where we are. Um, but anyway, we're going to take care of this archer, so the archer is going to do a normal move action plus zero, and then attack plus zero. Uh, oh, I can't pick this up very easily, but the bandit archer, the elite one, um, has a movement of two, so it's going to move forward two, one, two, probably a she, I think that one's a she, 
And then uh, she's going to attack. Her attack is three at a range of five. So she's just going to come straight here, shoot at Norman um, with an attack of three. Modified, making it a uh, four. All right, so Norman just took a hit of four. That's not good. Now I'm stuck with this decision. Do I take a hit of four, putting me down to three, um, or not? I'm kind of nervous because I know that the guards are going to be coming after Norman next. Um, I mean, I can heal myself next turn, but I can't heal myself right now. Uh, do I have any cards I'm willing to lose? Probably not, because I don't want to lose anything. Um, oh, uh, dang it, if only I had done that retaliate. Well, but that doesn't really work from afar. Oh, uh, okay. Well, those guards are a little bit weaker, but there's two of them. Oh my gosh. I'm going to hesitantly take a hit of four, putting me at three. And I'm doing that knowing that if the guards attack me uh, dangerously, then, I, then I'm just going to discard at that point. I'll, go, I'll lose my card then. Oh man, so that brings us to the bandit's turn. Um, so the bandits get to move three minus one, and then they're going to attack two, and then they have strengthen, and what strengthen is going to do is that it, um, it does, what it says, here, I'll show you the card, um, so it says here, strengthen uh, means that advantage on attacks, remove at the end of the next turn, and advantage is a little bit kind of complicated depending on what you draw, but let's just dive right into it. Okay, so there's no elite bandit, so uh, these both have equal priority. And from there, we're going to do the smaller number, which is this one. This guy has two, is number two, and then number five. All right. So um, I think they would probably just come straight forward. They can move two. Um, I don't think either one would block another. So we're going to move this guy up two. And then he's going to go ahead and attack Norman. Oh, man. Um, just to make things a little bit easier, I think, we're going to go ahead and put the discard right there. All right, so that's going to bring us to the guards' turn because they have an initiative of 55, which is going to go uh, before Crystal. There's no elite guards to go, so in that case, we're just going to go in numerical order for these regular bandits. So they're going to move minus one, which is unfortunate. They get three move. I was hoping they would just have the two. Um, so they're going to move three minus one, two spaces. That's going to allow this guy to come right up here, and he's going to go after Norman. He's going to do a regular attack. Uh, but he's got this Strengthen ability. Now, Strengthen can be a little confusing depending on the cards that are there, but basically it says that we have advantage, or that the guard has advantage on attacks. Remove at the end of the next turn. Here's the way that advantage works. Advantage is going to work where we are going to do the attack of two, but we're going to draw two cards and keep the better one, assuming they're both uh, standard modifiers. So here is a great example. So we have two standard modifiers, a zero and a one. And so we're going to keep the better one. That guy just did, oh man, three damage to Norman. Norman only has three health left, so we've got to go ahead and avoid that damage. Ugh. Uh, which one of these do we want to get rid of? None of them is the answer I'm looking for. Uh, an attack and a stun, an attack and it. Ooh, we really want that pierce probably. Uh... We, we obviously need to heal. Gosh, you guys, I don't want to get rid of any of these cards. Um, and why I haven't played some of these, I'll never know. <laughs> okay, uh, let's lose this card. I'd rather have attack a couple of players um, for three than attack three players for two, just because this seems like tougher to achieve. Mm-hmm, and I want to get the experience from that probably. Oh, man, but I really want the push because now we have traps and I want to be able to push the bad guys onto it. And none of these other cards have push. Oh, gosh, this choice is tough. I'd really like to use that for its shield and why I'm not using it now, I don't know. Guys, I just was I just had no idea. Hmm, maybe I'm going to get rid of that. But that's an attack four. Uh, attack three with a pierce. Wow, I really like all of these cards. Hmm. Okay, let's get rid of 
like this one, maybe. Attack. No, I really love that one on the bottom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, do you know what? I gotta pause the camera. This is so boring to watch. Give me a second. Okay, this is likely the wrong move. I'm gonna get rid of this one of Leaping Cleave. Okay, so that card is lost so that I can avoid the damage. Oh man, guys, I'm just gonna... <sighs> So the next bandit gets basically the exact same turn. I'm gonna move two, attack plus zero with this strengthen. Uh, okay, we need two minus ones, or a minus one and a miss, or a plus one. Okay, so we've got this plus one. <sighs> You've got to be kidding me. Okay, times two is better than plus one in this example. So that guy got a times two, which means he just did four damage. Clearly, I'm going to have to avoid that one as well. Uh, well, mm, you guys, I'm dying here. Literally. Okay. I want to keep all of these. Um, okay. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna lose that one. And unfortunately, Crystal didn't plan to do any healing this turn. All she had planned was a couple of attacks. I'm wondering if we can put ourselves in a position that will allow us to attack um, from a distance. I mean, on the one hand, I want to stay a distance away from Norman um because those guys are going to come after me but on the other hand we've got to go help him out in good ways maybe i could go try to uh let's look okay so we can move four at this point so how far could i get i could get one two three four Ooh, right next door and then i could one two three oh that's gonna be it's not even far enough for me to get over there i'm only gonna be able to target one person at a range of three but we've got to kill these guys or else we're we're in big trouble um hmm what if i moved here and then one two three now i know we're going through the door if i remember correctly i might be wrong line of sight means you need to be able to draw a line from any corner of your hexagon and be able to touch a corner of a hexagon of who you're trying to hit so if i draw a line here it looks like we can just barely get through the door and hit that uh, guard there. Yes, uh, I don't know how to better the situation. My attack is only gonna do two unless I draw a good modifier. This guy's at a health of three. Let's see if I can take him out and hopefully preserve Norman. All of this terribleness. I, I don't know where I went wrong, but it's not pretty. Okay, so we're gonna be attacking this guy. So we went ahead and moved. I can go ahead and just discard that card. And then our attack for two power, range of three. We don't have any elements to spend, unfortunately. So attack of two plus zero. So that guy's down to one. Uh, okay. Um, well, that ended this round. We're going to go ahead and discard this card. I'm not doing a short rest because I'm going to be forced to do a long rest uh, this turn. Norman's in big trouble, but we don't have any reason to reshuffle this right now. And over here, the monster attack modifiers are going to get shuffled. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, did that turn? Nope, we're good. Okay. Mm, guys, I need better luck. So with no elements to lower, we're just going to go into the next turn. Uh, one card. I didn't plan very well. So we're going to go ahead and add this just to show that we're going to be doing a long rest this turn. Norman has got to figure out a way to help himself. Um, one thing we're going to do is during our turn, we're going to heal ourselves. It's not our turn now. We're just planning stuff out. But I'm planning on, on healing uh, during your movement, add plus two move to a single movement. I don't know for sure. I think... Is this going to work? If we, during our movement, add two move to a single movement, um, 
I'm wondering if I can do that with this action here, that I can move four and jump if I needed to jump um, and attack two and then uh, target all enemies that we move through. So basically we can move through enemies and we're going to target all of the enemies. Oh, we're going to lose that card if we do that though. Hmm, what are some other options? I mean, this card isn't terrible. Uh, we would only be targeting the two guys around us. Um, I think I think that that's valid because that one's just not affected that one in the middle, but we would get the other two guys like that. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll double check before making anything final. Uh, down here, that would be a move and a push. Gosh, I wish I could have run up and pushed them uh, onto the trap. That would have been nice. Um, okay, over here. On the next six sources of damage from attacks targeting you, we're going to gain a shield. Um, and then we're going to get experience as we get attacked. You know, we could probably use that. At least it takes it takes a while. I'm probably going to use that for the bottom action. And then a retaliate. Um, we can target ourselves and gain one each time we retaliate and so as people hit us if they're right next to us then uh, we're going to do two damage back to them maybe i maybe i do want to do that and this so i just kind of start blocking myself and retaliating i'm going to end up losing that card 18 is pretty fast what do i want to heal myself though instead well we're going to be healing ourselves with this mm. Okay, so we're, we're going to either do these or we're going to do these. I'm thinking we're going to do this. So let's plan on that. Again, these cubes just represent our temporary plan until we, until we see differently. I'm going to do that, that. I need to do this quickly because uh, i got to kill these guys or end. i got to throw up my shield. Ugh. So with Crystal not doing anything uh, this round, well, she's doing the long rest, so nothing to play right now. We need to flip over these cards. Are you kidding me? An initiative of a 16, she's going to go before Norman, before he has any time to do anything. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then the guard. A 15? You are lying. They both are going to attack. Holy cow. I'm off camera, but I am pulling my hair. I can't believe that. Um, well, I just re I need a moment of serenity, and I just realized I forgot to change the round marker. That doesn't matter. Let's go do that really fast. Okay. Round six. <laughs> so I'm mostly mad at myself. I am so mad at myself right now. I'm... Mm. Of course I couldn't have known. There's no way for me to know. But these soldiers are going to shield themselves and then be ready to retaliate. So nothing that I had planned last turn is going to help me at all. Uh, well, whatever. So the guards uh, have a shield of one and then they are going to retaliate too, which means anybody that hits them, they're just going to hit back for two. Uh, which means I probably want to avoid doing that, um, if I can. Okay, so that was the guard turn, and then this is going to get shuffled back in at the end. Uh, for the archer, the archer is going to move plus one, and then do an attack minus one. Uh, so <clears throat> ranged people are going to move just so that they can get within range. So right now, uh, the archer, one, two, three, four, five, is within range of Norman. So she's not going to move anymore. She's going to just stay right there and just shoot at him. Um, and so her arrow is going to do, um, where does it, right there, an attack of three minus one. Right now, uh, the archer's at a two. But we've got to draw the attack modifier. Sorry, it's just off screen. I didn't plan that well. Uh, plus zero. So that's two on Norman. Norman's going to take the two damage, putting him at one. And that's going to bring him to his turn. All right, you guys, I got to think this through. I can't, I can't attack the guards. I've got to get away from the guards. I might just need to, honestly, I might need to pull back. <clears throat> um, look at the cards really fast. The first thing I'm going to do, i got to heal. I'm going to heal myself for three. I'm going to lose this card. I'm just going to kind of uh, move it off the screen so that I don't think about it anymore. 
Okay, so it's going to put Norman up to four. Okay, so here's the deal. This retaliate is not going to do anything for me now because the other guys have already gone. So unless I choose to attack two and move two, it's just not very helpful. So we're going to swap what we're doing probably. Let's go ahead and heal ourselves for two. We'll load up the leaf. We've got a range of one, but we're healing ourselves. So heal ourselves for two. Move the earth or leaf, whatever. That's going to let us go ahead and discard this card. And then we're going to attack three, push two. I'm feeling terrible about my luck. I might just go for the weaker guy. Because we, I mean, I think it's better to kill someone than to not. And taken out of context, what I just barely said was, was really terrible. Um, so, let's attack this guy. I'm going to try to take him out. He only has one health, but he also has a shield. Thankfully, we're pushing, and retaliation happens after the push takes place. So, yeah, we got to go draw a modifier. So for our attack three, push two, modified. We just barely killed him. Because I only really attacked two, uh, and then he shielded one, he's dead. The push doesn't even happen. We just remove him. Go ahead and add money in its spot. So that's going to bring us to Crystal, uh, who is doing her long rest so with initiative 99. So we need to pick one of these discarded cards to lose. Oh my gosh, it's not much. I am not doing well. I might end up having to redo this. Um, hopefully with some of your help. Okay, I don't want to lose that um, because that's going to help me get other things back. I guess I'm planning on doing this as soon as possible so it doesn't quite matter what I lose. Uh, let's lose hmm, this. That's fine. Okay, and then we get these back. And then we're going to heal ourselves for two, but we're already at full health uh, and nothing to refresh, so don't worry about that. But I will point out that I neglected to remember that I was on top of a loot at the end of her last turn, so let me just grab that. So here at the end of round six, this goes down one. I'm going to move that up to seven while we're here. And then this uh, symbol here is telling us that we need to reshuffle the guard cards. So let's do that. You know, while I'm doing this to keep you entertained while I amazingly shuffle, both of my characters, both of them, have two... Um, times two modifiers in their deck. And we haven't seen either of them. Help me understand how that's happening. <laughs> and then we've drawn two from the other deck. It's like, it's incredible. My rolling and my drawing is just so amazing. And then I should have done this before, but we're going to go ahead and get that card discarded. Um, and then this is our hand. I'll just flip it over to remember that's his hand uh, like that. So for round seven, uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Norman. He only has two cards. I didn't do a short rest. I don't, I don't feel like I should be doing short rests. Those make me nervous because we lose random cards. We'll go play his last two cards, decide how we're going to use them, uh, and that's going to lead us to a long rest next time. So I may need to pull away or be prepared. Ugh. So he's stuck with... I mean, he's got some boots. We might as well use these because we're going to be able to refresh it after our long rest next time. Uh, how could we use that with these? I mean, I could go... Hmm... I could move and push, but I can only move three. I think I needed to move six in order to really push that archer onto that trap. Yeah, that's only going to let me move five. I'm not sure. Hmm... I guess the push doesn't necessarily have to be... Yeah, let... I want, to, I want to show you about push, because I keep thinking that you have to, like, push, and maybe that's not the case. Maybe you maybe you can push in any direction. Let me go check that. That might be useful. Okay, so here's what push says. Uh, a target is forced to move X hexes in the direction specified by the attacker, but each hex moved must place the target farther away. Ugh, that's too bad, because I... With five movement... Oh, maybe this could work. I mean, I was thinking one, two, three, four, and then push this way, but they'd have to move farther away. But what if I went one, two, three, four, five, and pushed into the trap right there? I, ooh, I could do that. That would do three damage to the archer. 
and I could attack before I move. So I could attack the guard right next to me. Pierce ignores shield damage. He doesn't have shield right now, but who knows what he's going to draw. And then I could move and go push the other one. Hmm. We don't lose either of those cards. Oh, I think we've got a plan. Oh, really slow initiative, though. Okay, well, we're going to make 64. We'll go as fast as we can. I'm planning on attacking and then moving and pushing, and we'll be using our boots to do that. Okay, Crystal, we're counting on you to come do some good stuff because you're well-rested. You've been out of the game for a little bit. Time to do something productive with yourself. All right. Um, hmm, let's, let's go look at this over the map. All right. Uh, here's my thought. We have a leaf currently available. Uh, so I probably want to do this one. Attack two at a range of three, and then use the leaf to do another attack and gain a little bit of experience. That would be possible if I can get up here. So a range of three, so we need to go one, two, three, right there. If I can stand there. To stand there, I could move four. So if I move four, I could do that. I could go one, two, three, four, shoot at her. And I'm even thinking about using this uh, potion to do another damage, but maybe I really need to save this potion for when I'm going to be attacking more, more people than just one. Yeah, I'll save that. Okay, but I do like, I do like these things that I'm saying. Obviously, that's why I'm saying them. Uh, so we're going to play that one. With that initiative, we can go quickly. Uh, we're going to play this one. We want to move first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to move four. And then we're going to attack. Keep that. Oh, only two cards. Man, she is just wearing out. Okay, so we've got our plan in place. Let's see what plan these fools have. We have an initiative 20 for Crystal. Okay, 70 for the guard. They're going to go after both of our characters. That's good. Um, and then for the archer, 32. So the archer's going to go after Crystal, but before Norman. So Crystal is going to go ahead and move four. And then we're going to attack two, range three, plus let's go um, move a leafy down. So she's running in, one, two, three, four. And yeah, you are able to cross allies, just not enemies. And right now she's going to be doing three attack. Oh, let's give ourselves an experience too while we're at it, before I forget. Okay, so plus one attack, okay. So three attack, and then times two, times two, times two. Or plus one. That's all right. Okay, four damage. I'll take it. And if we can get to Norman's turn, he's going to be able to finish her off. So for the archer's turn, she's going to move zero and then attack with a plus one and a range minus one. So she's just going to be attacking Crystal anyway. Um, her range is five, so really her range is four, but that's fine. She's going to just stay there. And now before coming into this uh, phase, I just double checked the rule book and remembered that if you're doing a ranged attack and you're actually next to somebody, uh, we should have done a disadvantage, which is kind of like the opposite of advantage, obviously. Uh, you would draw two cards and then choose the worst card of the two. Um, I can't remember, but I feel like back in the first room, Crystal probably should have had disadvantage. Um, if I catch that, I'll make a note of it in the gameplay uh, and apologize right now for the mistake. Um, but because uh, she's already within range, she's not going to move anywhere. She's just going to stay there, and she's going to go ahead and shoot at Crystal. Her attack is going to be a plus one, so she's going to be attacking with four. Whoa. Um, not great. And then modifying that four. Ugh. If this is a times two, you guys, I just might have to just end the whole channel right here and now because that's ridiculous. Five. Wow. That is rough. As soon as I saw that five, I had a couple of thoughts. I thought, oh, man, why didn't I just put on my cloak of invisibility and maybe I should go back and put that on? Um, but the thing is that I wanted to protect Norman also, because, I mean, Norman's still not at his full health. We're both at six, but Norman can still get a little healthier, so I won't even go back and redo that. I just wasn't thinking, but I've got to keep that in mind. I'm mostly trying to save these for the last room. Let me just also clean this up, because we uh, did that already, but uh, five. Hmm. I don't think that I want to go down to one. That's, that's a little bit too dangerous for me, but also she can't... Well, we can lose a card, because... 
Oh, we can't lose a card right now. And the reason why I can't lose a card right now is because then I won't be able to play this card next turn. I'm going to have to do a long rest again before I play that. Oh, but maybe I should do that. Ooh. This is risky. If I lose this card, it's over. Um, and the brute's not going to be able to kill the guard, and the brute's running away. The guard is going to be... Oh, the guard is going to be targeting me, isn't he? Wow. I'm in trouble. Okay. The guard's going to be targeting me, but probably not for five. I need to lose. I'm going to lose this to avoid losing the five damage. And get ready for the guard to attack. But before the guard does anything, it's Norman's turn. So he's attacking with three, piercing two. Uh, the pierce doesn't matter because the guard didn't end up drawing a shield. So just going to attack three. We'll go ahead and do that and modify it. Gosh. Okay. Plus two. Or times two. I have two of those in here. If I could get a times two, we will kill the guard and save Crystal. You suck. Attack two, so that means we're going to lose that five. I'll put three in its place. One, two, three. Okay, so this guy's at four. Hmm. I'm feeling very frustrated. And, I mean, in a good way. I am enjoying myself. I know I sound frustrated, but my card draws are out of this world terrible all the time, apparently. The good news is that we can go ahead and move three. I don't even need to use the boots. It would have been cool if I had used the boots, but I don't need to. We're going to move three uh, and then push one. There's only going to be one uh, adjacent enemy. Oh, and I lied. I was looking at Crystal as I was saying that. So I need to go one, two, three, four, five. I am. It's just off screen, but I am going to go ahead and turn those. We're using the boots. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to push her onto the trap. This trap with this level does three damage, so that's going to take out the archer. Uh, we just have that pesky guard who's still going to take his turn. Um, but she sets off the trap and dies, and that's going to put a loot right there. Which brings us to the guard's turn. The guard is going to move uh, two, so she's going to come right here, and then attack plus one, so going to do three damage. I swear, if this... If this is a times two, I'm going to lose it. Okay, plus zero. Ugh, three damage isn't awesome, but I'll take it. Whatever. Well, that way. Okay, three. Round eight. Um, and because there's, there's no decks to reshuffle, we're not doing a short rest. Uh, things like that. Oh, crap. But both of our characters are doing a long rest this turn, which means the guard is the only one that's going to do stuff. Oh, wow. That could. That could end Crystal, depending on what he does. Please, cross your finger that we don't have an attack this turn. I need that card that was like just shield and retaliate. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Oh my gosh, how did that happen? I don't know. Both of our characters are long resting. Okay, we're going over to Norman first. Okay, so he's got to lose one of these, which is never good. Uh, oh, attacks. Uh, okay, uh, do you know what? G give me a second. You don't need to watch this. I'm going to pick a card of these to lose. I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose this one. Spare dagger. Uh, it would be nice to have that range, but he's so rarely using range, and I could really, I could really use him to get in on the action. Uh, so we lost that one, and then we go ahead and turn this back up this way. And again, I'm doing that because of this symbol here. Uh, that happens when you long rest. It, it reminds you of that um, right here in this spot. And then for Crystal, I mean, we, we are cutting it close. I should have pulled these cards back forever ago, but we're going to be rejuvenated for the last round. So I need to lose one of these cards... Um, man, it doesn't matter which one I lose because I'm going to, <laughs> fingers crossed, I'm going to be getting all of the lost cards back. So, yeah. Okay. 
gosh, in my brain this is going to work. <laughs> but how often do things work? Okay. <clears throat> All right, there we go. That was that. Round nine. Let's finish this room. But really quickly before I do that, <laughs> technically it's still the last round. I got to shuffle these in here. Oh my gosh. Can I cannot believe that. I'm so happy that that happened, but so sad that it will never, ever happen again. So Crystal really only has this option. There's nothing else. Other, we lose. She gets exhausted, at least. Uh, we're going to do an initiative of 20. We've got to get all of our cards back into our hand. And then we're finally going to do this special action where we do a token um, that we're going to ignore some damage, which is great. I should have done that a while ago, but it's going to be one of those uh, lost cards. Um, but I think as we play this and lose it, oh, but that stays in for the round. We're not going to get it back, but that's okay. We're, guys, we're okay. Norman, what are you going to do? I need Norman to go as quickly as possible and to just finish off that guard if we can. Is there anything here that's going to let us just take out that guard? Oh, an attack of six. But then we lose that card. Um, uh, pushing him doesn't really help. An attack of three with a pierce. Yeah. The thing is that he has an he has a health of four right now. Um, and Crystal's not gonna be able to, to help out. So can I is there any way for me to get four other than drawing well, which I probably won't. Um Okay, an attack of three. Um attack of three push two. We could try to push him out of the way. Well, if we play the right initiative, okay. I've gotta play a low enough initiative card that we can get in there first. And maybe healing isn't a bad idea. We could heal Crystal, actually. Uh, well, no, because I can't get into I can't get into the position to attack him. I wish I had that range I just discarded. Hmm. Okay. What if I I need to play this for the initiative. It's the lowest initiative we've got. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna use this to move into place and 18 my initiative and then we're gonna attack yeah so I'm using this for the move not for the heal because uh, I can't even reach her unless we do that unless and I don't have to decide right now maybe it depends on what the guard does but it's not a bad option either to move for attack to uh, that's just the good one to sweep out all the people maybe I really but I could use that to just move into position so that the guard attacks me instead of attacking her and then I could retaliate I, I'm not sure let's see what the guards doing uh, either way I've got my two cards picked and my initiative set okay so this fool he has 50 that's good we're both gonna go before him uh, he's just moving normal and he's gonna be attacking his normal two um, yeah, maybe it is a good idea to just go put myself in harm's way. Hmm. My issue is that it's going to really come down to the attack modifier that I draw. We've drawn so much crap. Okay, so well, we've had a couple good ones. So three plus ones, three minus ones. What the heck is even left in there? Um, let me just take a sneak peek. Because that really might guide my decision. All right, so we have lots of plus zeros we haven't seen. We have a couple more plus ones, a couple more minus ones, plus two, minus two, of course. And then I have a... Uh, it is such a 50-50 thing. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, what am I going to do? Do I just hold on to my retaliate so I just do two quick damage to him? Hmm. I just, I need to pull the attention away from Crystal. So the question is, do I run up to the guy and attack three? So I just use this to run up to him and attack three. Or do I just use this one to do a plain run up to him and hold on to retaliate? Um, and, and automatically hit him for two as he hits me. Oh, I mean, I, it's, it's two damage that just happens. That's my concern, and this one's a risk. 
okay, we're going to risk it. I'm going to run over to him. Okay, so we're taking my turn. I'm running over to him for two. One, two. Oh, he'll, he'll even face him. How about that? And, man, I'm running out of space over here. Okay, so that's coming down here. <clears throat> and now we're attacking with three, piercing with two, which doesn't do anything. But we're attacking with three, and modified, it's going to end up being just three. Uh, okay, I really wanted that times two. But three damage is going to bring him down to one. Okay. And as much as I just want Crystal to finish him off, like I'm half tempted to just do an attack of two, there's no way. I mean, we would discard these, we'd have to do a long rest. We would finish him off, discard both of those cards, and then I could do a long rest after that. Okay. Well, no, I can't, because these would be discarded, and then to do a long rest, I would lose a card, and at that point, I'm exhausted. I lose. Yeah, no option. Okay, so uh, what was I going to do? Was I going to move to? No, we're going to actually initiate this thing here, which means I just need to grab one of Crystal's um, little tokens here, and... Um, it says on the next two sources of damage um, to you, you're going to suffer no damage instead. So let me just put this over here on the side. When I take a damage, I'll move this here. And when I take another damage, I'll move it here. I think that's how that works. Um, let me, give me a second, let me double check. I just don't know if I start the token on that or if I start the token right there. Okay, so just looking it up, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, it looks like I do put the token on here, and then when I take a damage, I'll move it down, and when I take a damage, I'll move it down. Uh, my question is, do I get the experience right now, um, or do I get the experience when I get hit? I think I get the experience probably when I get hit. Uh, makes the most sense to me. Uh, but either way, I also need to go ahead and move the winter element up. And then this card is going to just stay up here in the active slot. Um, like that. I should have been playing the cards farther over, but it's okay. Uh, and then I'm going to recover all of my lost cards. We're going to move the knight element up, and then I'm never going to be able to recover this card again, but it is lost. Um, but as a result, we're going to gain all of these lost cards back, and we're going to mean business in the next room. So I'm going to just turn this sideways and upside down so that I remember. I, there's no way for me to get that back. So let's go ahead and jump that thing up. So that's going to bring us to the guard's turn. This scenario, I'm sorry, I did not mean for this scenario to take as long as it's taking. I thought it would be pretty straightforward, but apparently I'm slow at killing things. Um, okay, so the guard is going to just be attacking Norman because they're both equidistant from him. And then uh, Norman had a lower initiative. Um, so the attack is going to be two. It's modified by zero from the card. And then this modifier, mm, so three on Norman. So we'll go one, two, three. We do lower these elements by one, and uh, nobody has anything to shuffle, and we're not going to do a short rest, so we move that up. Wow, ten rounds. Guys, I am sorry. I did not know this was going to be so long. Ideally, Norman could take out this guy this turn. Ugh, only one health left. We've got to be able to do that, I would think. <laughs> um... Don't want to waste that on him. I mean, an attack of two, that's pretty straightforward. And then we could put up our guard for next turn. Not a bad idea. I mean, an attack of two is risky. Uh, an attack of three is better. But I would kind of, I'm kind of hoping to use this. On the next uh, six damage, we put up a shield. Kind of would like to use that. Um, I, mean, I might change my mind, but my intention is 32 initiative, uh, and then I would like to use this uh, to kind of put up a shield before we enter the last room, and then attack with two on the guy. I don't know. Fingers crossed. And then for Crystal, it would be pretty nice probably if she could maybe heal herself, uh, if she could kill the guy, but we'd want to move her back for that disadvantage thing I was talking about. Um, maybe pick up a loot. So if I moved and then I attack, well, what is that? Um, target all adjacent enemies and then immobilize them. Well, I just want to kill them at this point. Okay, so range three. 
Or range two, attack three. Yeah, that seems like a good backup plan to have. Uh, there's that loot card. I have. I feel like I haven't seen that thing in forever. We can move really far. Hmm. And attack two to range three. I'd rather that one. Okay, so let's think. Uh, this card for the attacking, and any of these cards really for movement, uh, just to move where we want them to go. And we'll put our initiative at 36. Hopefully we can uh, beat the guard. Well, unless I really want to heal. Hmm. Maybe I want to do this one instead. 21, that's faster. Do that. Heal. Well, I don't need to heal myself four. Mm. Let's hold on to that. What did I have down there before? <laughs> I had this one. Did I? No, oh, heal three. That would be good, though. An initiative of seven. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Let's plan on that. So the guard. Initiative 15. Wow, I'm glad we played that initiative seven. Oh, he's just going to shield and retaliate. Why? That I mean, I loved that one last time. I promise I'm shuffling. You watched me. Well, we'll see. Okay, so in order for this to go well, instead of healing, I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk back two so that I can attack him with a three since he's got that shield, and I'm gonna move away so that he can't retaliate against me. So we'll start off by moving back two. One, two, and then I can pick up this loot at the end of the turn. I don't mean to keep hogging them from Norman. It's just Norman's been busy, and i moving away. And then if I had uh, the fire element, which I don't, then I could add a wound to him, but he's so close anyway. Okay, attack of three, range two. We can do it. You know, here's where the times two comes into play, where I don't even care about it. Um, ooh, plus one. Well, I also don't care, but at least it kills the guard. So our attack of four... He's gone. Um, take him out. Drop this money in its spot. And now we just got to figure out what to do with Norman uh, in the meantime. I guess uh, I'm going to move him three so that he can pick up a loot. And he's not going to attack anyone. He's just going to hang out there. So we'll just discard this card. Uh, I think I can do that. Uh, and then we're going to move three. So one, two, three. Oh, and then Crystal picked up this at the end of her turn. And now Norman is picking up this at the end of his turn. And then we can go ahead and discard this card. Norman's only got one card left, so he's going to spend this turn resting. Um, and, yeah. And that's going to go ahead and end the round. We're going to slide these over. <laughs> wow. Round 11. Um, it was not my intention to do Scenario 1 as a two-parter. But I'm leaning that way with how long this thing has gone. And I forgot to go ahead and discard that. But now I have done it. So just so you know where I'm headed. Uh, Norman's going to do a long rest this turn because he only has one card left. So he has to. Gosh, we are so close to the end, guys. I think he might get exhausted this round. Which means I think I'm going to go ahead and have Crystal come and open the door. And then I want her to have some kind of a ranged attack ready just in case... Uh, there's something scary on the other side of the door. So I would need one, two, three, four, and a jump. Ooh, or eight and a jump. That works too. Okay, so we're going to send Crystal running um, with eight and a jump. And then it would be great to have some range. Additionally, target all enemies on the path. Ooh. Both of these are, we're going to lose them. Um, we could immobilize some people. Well, with a move of eight, we could really run over there and immobilize them. And also, uh, use our Cloak of Invisibility. Okay, and with an initiative of 21, I don't think the people will really be going immediately after, well, no matter what, they're going to go after her. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I hope this is okay, and even if it's not, what can you do? I've already uploaded the thing. We're going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four. She's avoiding the trap because she jumped. And we're going to open the door. And with that cliffhanger in mind, we're going to make this just like a real good TV episode or the end of Emperor Strikes Back. Uh, yep, we're going to 
end the episode right here. Christelle's going to open the door. When we come back, we're going to see what's in the room, and we're going to finish off her turn. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great night, and we'll catch you later. Bye. Oh, I'm getting sick.